Oh man, okay. Today's the first time filming one of these little video journals. Ow, that thing's hot in three days or something like that. I don't know, since the park. So I think that was actually two days ago, but whatever. I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna make two of these videos today. This one is for catch up for old thoughts. And then um, today's thoughts, because I have a lot of thoughts going for today. That's gonna be technically tomorrow's video, and this video will actually be posted today the 9th of April um which is crazy I was just thinking about dates and like um how I'll just fill out the sky um okay let me get right into it so I was no no I'm gonna say that for the next video about not every single day has to have a big accomplishment you just have to keep moving in the same direction Okay, so these thoughts, let's just get these out of the way. It's a short video. Um, bum, 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 bum. One, everybody's 100% is their 100%. That theme keeps popping up, you know. Um, like, all that you've ever experienced is your 100% and the greatest amount of pain, the greatest amount of happiness, etc. And it's just like, I feel like we get more character and texture in life when we experience more extreme things like, and learn how to be happier, learn how to be more sad learn how to feel those emotions because it's not about being happy all the time it's about being peaceful and peace is quite simply a balance think about it peace time between war is both of them want to kill each other but they're agreeing to not so it's like they want to kill and they want to stay alive so it's like they're peacefully agreeing and so it's kind of like you balance it out with your emotions of learning how to be happy and learning how to be sad because the goal is not to be happy all the time the goal is to know how to manage it almost um uh influential upon the youth at work yeah this was on like friday today's monday so on friday or whatever it was saturday um two guys at work or no saturday it was saturday because on friday at work i told this kid that i've been on social media since high school but i was like but I'm not completely off it. Like I still have my accounts because I go on every like every now and then and I check old edits that I used to make of skating and such. And like I'll text people that I haven't texted in a long time. Like I still have messages from like almost a year ago actually that I haven't seen yet. Um, but I told him that on Friday and then on Saturday he came in for work. Uh, his name is um, oh my god I'm so sorry Kyler. And the other kid's name is Hudson. And Kyler was like, are you like, how is it like now that you're off social media? Like, I'm curious, like, is, is life like better? Like, I feel like it's so much easier. Well, he may basically ask the question by saying like, I bet like it's so nice. Like when you have to do homework, you're not like going on TikTok. And I'm like, well, first off, I've never had TikTok. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it's nice because now even my distracted moments are filled with production and like my default like I was saying a couple of videos ago, actually, is like constantly moving and constantly being productive, like always working towards something. So it's like when I don't want to start working on my homework or whenever I want to take a break from it, I'm not going to go on my phone. I'm going to start reading or I'm going to start writing is my actually like my biggest occupation. I've spent probably about 10,000 hours writing because I'm it's a couple hours a day. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, for the past like five years. Anyways, um, and a lot of hours thinking too but I was telling him that and he's like that's awesome that's awesome and like they see me I'm 19 one year out of high school not even one year and like I have this cool car um, I'm going to pick up a new one today and sell this one to Ethan the stepbrother and we're both gonna have two classic cars mine's gonna be a muscle car it's I'm so excited um, don't don't show dad I'm keeping you this secret until it's fully finished um, but that's to you, Nana, or Uncle Doug, because Uncle Doug, I know that you're watching the videos now, too. Um, but I'm very influ influential upon them because they were, like, completely amazed about how I live my life. And I'm like, if I can be this influential upon people and inspirational, they're like, dude, I'm going to start doing that. Like, that's influence. And if I can do that at 19, and now that I'm finally discovering what I want to do with my life because of this freaking book which I just got last night. Now I have my own copy. Ethan let me read his like a couple months ago. Um, I have no doubt that no matter what I do, it'll be influential. If just me being me at a default 
is influential upon people, like anybody, like even people who are 10 years older than me at work are like amazed. And I'm like, what? Well, okay, cool, sweet. Um, like, then I know for a fact, whenever I get into my artistic and beauty of creation, that I not only can reach the masses, but it's just awesome, like to look at, feel, hear, smell, like whatever. Like, I know that I'll be very influential. So it's like, I know that I'm gonna be successful, but it's like a matter of making it the best it possibly can be with the best message and being the best example because teaching by example is the best way. And so it's like, I, have to, I feel like I'm gonna dedicate my life being an example to this world about how to live life. Not to be controlling, but be like a guidance. You know what? If you wanna look at what I do, here's what I think about on YouTube. And maybe, oh, here's my, uh, deepest feelings in music here's how I see the world in whatever I may create like maybe a painting or something I don't fucking know um yeah so if I it, it, like just the people I'm around if they're all influenced around me even my even my closest friend group like they will send pictures every year and be like yo here's my update on my physique for working out and like it's all because Enzo started working out and like got me inspired and it's like literally everybody's like like literally all my friends now have like six packs which is crazy <laughs> um and um even Frank who went for me fat my brother and then thoughts prepared by YouTube videos hell oh, yeah the influence of Jeffy it was this old like TV series thing like on YouTube that we used to watch as kids and it was so influential upon us that like like, even today, like, five, six years later, Gordon and I are still influenced by Jeffy. And, like, we still go through our everyday, go like, Arr! and, like, doing his little mannerisms. And it's, like, that's the level of, like, influence I want to get to. Not, that's, that was immature and shitty, but, like, to the point where it's, like, people's entire life and how they go through it is changed for the better because of my existence. So it's, like, that'd be really cool, you know? Like, I was reading the creative act, like, like Michelangelo's this, 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 all like the greatest works of art. It's like, why are they creative? And it was kind of like the fact of like, I was here. So it's like, oh, of course I want to naturally have that feeling and be like, I want to leave a mark for the world. Um, time to write a thought is, what, oh yeah, the time to write a thought is when it happens, not remembering it for later. That's kind of influenced by Rick Rubin. I started writing so much because I heard a quote from him and in an in, in interview, and he was saying that, like, always, whenever you have a thought, write it down immediately. Because whenever you have a thought, if you have it on paper, you can choose to throw it away, but if you try to remember it, you're going to forget it. And so it's like, I started doing that, and now, my, now I have 400 notes on my phone, and now I have four journals, and I've got second one of these little notebooks. Um, I've started doing video journals, like, just putting content out there just out of me, which is crazy. My lips are so dry right now. Also, how boring would life be without problems? Like, purpose or time consumption? Cat and oh yeah, the, pur the thing. Purpose or time consumption? I don't know. But it's like, catch up and then move forward. So it's like, I spent all of junior year kind of discovering that I wanted to work towards money. I spent all of senior year catching up and clearing like, like cash not like c-a-c-h-e like like the memory and like all the things i needed to like clear out of the way chores whatever um like debt buying my own car um having my own clothes and like going from nothing to having a base you know like having seminal i think was the word dad taught me today some of the seminals i don't know and um it's like catch up and then you move forward and it's kind of like, I've been fearing that for so long, like moving forward, because it's moving into the unknown. Whereas catching up is obvious. It's like, oh, I need to heal this broken bone before I start doing this again. It's like, oh, duh. Before you move forward, you have to catch up. So, and then finding new problems as you move forward. Problems mean like tasks to allow you to that next level. Um, then creating what I want to see be made by my favorite artists. Um, yeah. So that's like why I write skits. That's why I'm writing songs. That's why I'm writing raps. That's why I'm about to start learning um, how to make beats. I think after, when I leave for Guam, and like five months or something like that, 
I'm gonna buy a laptop and just get a bunch of like recording stuff um, and just start learning how to make beats and just get better at that. And maybe by the time I'm 24, I'll be able to have the skill, maybe even 22, to put out an album and maybe get recognized or a mixtape and then get recognized and then I'd get professional help to make true, truly good stuff. Um, so funny to not give a fuck about these. Girls annoy them. Not a people pleaser. I don't know what that one was. But yeah, like the more I look at girls in a very platonic way, even though they're very beautiful, I'm like, wow, you're so annoying. I don't want to spend my time with you. Um, golfing off of a castle. And then, oh, okay, yeah. That was just like something cool that I thought would be fun to do. Just like a life memory. I have those thoughts sometimes where I'm like, what's something that you spend an entire day doing and it's so simple, but you remember it for the rest of your life? And so it's like, that was the other day. It's like, Ethan and I spent the entire day sanding a car frame. And it's like, I'm going to tell that. Well, that's not really a story. You're like, oh, dude, there was one time I sanded a car. No, nah, but like, say you like row a boat across this lake into this little thing, like onto a little island with a castle. And then you go golfing off of it and have a deep conversation with your, like, your Goomba, your closest friend. Holy shit, I thought dude was going to hit me. That scared the Ooh, my heart moved over like an inch. That was weird. Um, yeah. So anyway, turning off all the sexual interests until it's time. Uh, see all the women for their character. That's kind of what I was saying. It's like seeing women in a platonic way. I've always wanted to and always knew that you should, but I never knew what it felt like to actually do that. And now that I'm actually doing it, I'm like so happy. It's like, it's so, it's so nice to see them. And I'm like, wow, I don't like you at all. I don't care that you're beautiful. Like, there's literally girls that are not beautiful. But I'm like, I fucking love you. Like, you are amazing. Like, well, they're beautiful in their own way. Put it that way. I don't know. But at least I'm not gay. Mmm. Yo, you and I be talking about freestyles. I don't know what rhymes with. I don't know. I'm not very tired. I need to go down and like, I don't know. I'm stuck at freestyling, but I'm gonna get good. Um, yeah, that was it for that. I'm so, so grateful for Dad and Hannah allowing me the space and support, or uh, the space and su the support and space I need to ease into adulthood, like free staying, uh, personal space. I'm like half of an adult because I only need to add rent and then I'm completely solo. Like right now, I have my, I got to the point, they allowed me the space where I could save up money to buy my own car, start paying my own insurance start paying my own gas, start paying my own food, and then get a good savings to get ahead and have like three months of living in a savings account. And it's like, I have all of that, but I'm actually low-key sick of being such a good kid, being such a good boy, and like having everything so perfect. And I'm going all in on this investment today. Um, actually, technically not all in, it's like half in. The rest of my assets are still in there. I just taken a bunch of money out of my emergency fund because it's just sitting there and wasting away. I could turn that into, I could double it in a month, which I will. Um, so, and then I can return it and use house money. And then just take the other 6K, the house money of 6K. So I have 6K in a savings account. If I take it and put it in this investment, and then it's actually gonna be like 8K investment. Um, I can double it to around 12 to 16 and then take my actual 6k put it back into the savings account have that safety net again and then use that house money the profit and then do the same sort of project again and then double that and then double it's freaking math bro it's so easy like, i don't understand why people don't understand money or like i don't know <sighs> but then again i'm also kind of just a, a guy of theory because like i was thinking last night i haven't flipped a single car I flipped one car. It was my first car ever. It was a BMW. Um, and, like, I flipped it for $100 profit or something like that. Or, like, $500 profit. And then, with that money... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I bought it for two grand. I sold it for 2500 And then, I bought this car for 2400 and had $100 profit in between the cold cars. So, I technically got this car for two grand. That's my math. And, um... What else? And then I've had, what other cars have I had that I sold? I think that's it. But then now I have the MGTD that I'm working on. My 
1952. That one's gonna sell for like 29 grand, and we only put 4K into it. Actually, no, we're gonna put like 6K into it. And then right now we're buying this mystery one that you're gonna find out about in tomorrow's video um, that we're picking up today. And I'm gonna. I agreed for not. Or if the guy offered to lower it down to 5K to pick up this car. And when I get there, I'm gonna offer him 4K because it's in shitty condition and um, like shittier than he advertised uh, that I looked at, I analyzed the pictures and stuff. And so there's that. And then I'll have to buy a bunch of parts for it, which will be like three grand. So I can, for seven to eight grand, I can build this car that's worth 12 to, honestly 20, that's what he said, but I'm gonna say 15, 12 to 15 grand. And then you can just double your money right there. Well, let's just say 1.5x your money to be safe because you don't ever want to assume the best assume the worst and then yeah anyways um but yeah i'll see you in the next video